You know what I say this morning that we need to pray for the ministries of this church. Sometimes maybe we don't take it as seriously as we ought. I was looking in the front of my Bible as Charles and Shirley was singing about freedom and how that freedom we have in this great country and we've had freedom in Jesus Christ. But in front of my Bible I've written down a note to myself that my daughter at three and a half years of age was saved in junior church. Starting a junior church for two and three year olds, make no mistake, two and three year olds can come to know Christ as their personal savior. They can come to know this personal freedom and begin this journey in walking with Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Does it, does it not mean that there won't be some humps and bumps along the way? Well, I would imagine most of you have had a few humps and bumps along the way too, have you not? But they at least get started on the right track and then they begin that growing process. And we praise the Lord for that. Thank you for that special. Appreciate that so much. Thank you for all the special music. We don't want anybody to think that it hasn't been appreciated. I appreciate it tremendously. If you have your Bible this morning, take your Bible and turn with me to the book of Nehemiah chapter 1. Nehemiah chapter 1. We're going to read a few verses there. But as you're turning, let me give you one verse of Scripture that kind of preempts what, where we're going this morning. In, in Psalms 11.3 it says, If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And looking in the Barnes commentary, Dr. Barnes says this. He said, the word foundation here refers to those things on which society rests or by which social order is sustained. The great principles of truth and righteousness that uphold society. Freedom is not cheap. Freedom is not cheap. You can go and fight a war and win a war. But if you don't have the principles upon which to uphold society, you won't keep the victory very long. There's going to be a constant grumbling and eventually a falling apart. And I want to talk about the walls of protection. We have some walls that have been built by our forefathers, been put in place by our forefathers, that have made this country a great country for a long period of time. And I think this morning that probably you will agree with me, these walls that I'm going to share with you are beginning to deteriorate a little bit. A little bit of mortar falling out between the blocks, so to speak. And there's some things that we can as a church can address and make that a whole lot better. But let's, let's read from the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 1. It says the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. And it came, and it came to pass in the month of Chisalu in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan the palace, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came he and certain men of Judah and asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped which were left of the captivity concerning Jerusalem and they said unto me the remnant that are left of captivity there in the providence are in great affliction and reproach the wall of Jerusalem is also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire and it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days, and fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven, and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive, and thine eyes open, and that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now night and day for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses. I want to stop reading at that particular point in this particular passage of Scripture. Nehemiah, as we read this particular story, Nehemiah was made aware of the fact of the situation that had occurred in Jerusalem. Nehemiah was the king's cupbearer. He had a job that was assigned to him as a captive of, of the country that captive, had him captive. He had a responsibility. And yet, as he was told of what was going on in Jerusalem, Nehemiah was burdened. 
His heart was broken. And the Bible records the fact how he went to prayer, how he went to fasting. And he began to pray, not just for his own people, but prayed for himself. He confessed the sins of the people as well as his own sins. But what had happened? Jerusalem had been taken captive and the inhabitants had been scattered. Some had been taken by their enemies as like Nehemiah had been, had been taken to be a servant. Others had been just scattered and others were just left there in Jerusalem. But the thing that you read in this chapter that caught Nehemiah's attention was the fact that the walls and the gates had been destroyed and his heart was heavy because of that. And why was that? Well, as you read chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, Nehemiah makes it very clear why that happened. It was because of the sins of the people, because they had transgressed the covenant that God had made with them. God made a covenant through their forefathers and through Moses, and they had transgressed that covenant. You know, sin is missing the mark. Sin is a failure to live up to God's righteous standard. Sin is corrupt in its action. Sin leads to ruin. Sin is offensive to God, and our sin is always, always, ultimately against God. The sin of Israel and Judah led them to ruin. Remember this, sin will always lead you to ruin. Sin will always lead you to ruin. It might seem like an innocent flirtation, but it will lead you to ruin. We're living in a day and age when we have so much, so many things that are available to us that men of days gone by didn't have available to them. Be it the internet, be it Netflix, be it the dish, whatever it might be, that we can pump into our house all kinds of things into our homes that can bring us to ruin. Chat rooms. You've heard about chat rooms, haven't you? Men and women can go into chat rooms. Wondering, I wonder if I've lost the touch. And log in. And before you know it, they've entered into a electronic connection with a person of the opposite sex. And they're putting themselves in a compromised position where they should never ever be. Never should be. And ultimately, will destroy their reputation. Well, did I tell you sin has a way of finding you out? Oh, yes. What you sow, you reap. And you always reap more than you sowed. So all those hours and minutes connecting, communicating, you sow. But the harvest comes in. It brings shame to your family, to your husband, to your wife, to your children, to your church. To your colleagues. The old song says sin will take you farther than you want to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay. Cost you more than you want to pay. And that's what happened to the nation of Israel. God said to the nation of Israel, he said, now look. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have the dish. They didn't have the cyber space or whatever it is that we have today. No, they didn't have that. But God said, look over there. You see that over there? Those are the Canaanites. I don't want you going over there. I want you to stay right here. I want you to marry your own kind. I want you to be involved in loving me, serving me, honoring me, and looking to me, and I will bless you head and shoulder above all the nations of the earth. <laughs> what did Israel do? They said, well, I kind of like to see what's on the other side of the fence. Who is God to tell me that I can't go over and see what's on the other side of the fence? And so they went on the other side of the fence and what happened? Sin cost them more than they wanted to pay. And here we are in the book of Nehemiah. They have reaped what they have sowed. You know, as I read in my Bible, I find that there's a cycle of sin that has manifested itself with the nation of Israel. And I think you will find that to be true with nations today, not just the nation of Israel. Let me give you that cycle of sin quickly. They went from bondage to spiritual faith, from spiritual faith to great courage, from great courage to strength, from strength to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to leisure, from leisure to selfishness, from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependency, from dependency to weakness, and from weakness back to bondage. I believe you'll see that very same cycle in nations today. Where are we in that cycle as a nation. When nations die and nations do die, they lose that which was treasured. They lose their liberty. They lose their individuality. They lose their spirituality. They lose their purity. But here's something else they lose that is so important. They lose their conscience. 
this is right and this is wrong. They lose their conscience, their ability to worship. They lose their knowledge of God, that God is a righteous God. They lose the reverent fear of God. We are where we are today because we were a nation in our infancy that recognized the importance of prayer. What did Nehemiah do? Nehemiah went to prayer. If you go back and you read some of the historical documents of this great nation, we are, we have become the nation that we, we are because there were in our, in our infancy, there were in our infancy those men and women that